Up next, livestock feed is usually one of the greatest costs that a livestock producer faces. That makes grassland management a key component of ensuring profitability. Market Journal's Bill Dodd recently spoke with a Nebraska Extension beef systems educator to get his take on the necessity of plants identification when dealing with grassland management. Managing grassland profitably will inevitably require the ability to identify what plants are in your pastures, as well as understanding the important characteristics of core desirable plants and common or problematic undesirable plants. However, this doesn't necessarily mean that you need the ability to identify every single plant that you survey. I suggest learn, starting with uh, the top five most common or uh, most undesirable species, uh, desirable or undesirable. Um, and, and I think even before this, it comes down to a fundamental understanding of the plant community. And so whether that is, um, uh, you know, you know, cool season base, a warm season base, or, or a mix of both, and then starting out kind of looking at uh, what the most important species are. And uh, I think ranchers, for the most part, will understand what, what these species are, but uh, kind of starting with uh, those, core, those core species, um, I like to think of them as, uh, you know, group them into desirable and undesirable. So you can uh, pay attention to really what you want and what you're managing for, and then uh, keep an eye on those uh, potential invasive species that might be that might be creeping in as well. So desirable and undesirable plants will, will depend heavily on on first the goals of the the property uh, or the operation, and then and then also on the location, which will uh, you know dictate precipitation and soil type. And so, for example, in eastern Nebraska, um, smooth brown grass might be a desirable species for a livestock producer because of the forage quality and quantity produced. However, if the goal of the operation is more focused on wildlife, then uh, smooth brown grass, smooth brown grass, would be an undesirable species because it creates such a monoculture, and uh, uh, instead of the the variability of species and habitat structure that are desired by wildlife, um, in the sand hills, prairie sand reed and sand blue stem are would be staples, staple species for a, a cattle diet. Um, as you move further west, uh, you move into um, more of a cool season dominated pastures with uh, a lot of western wheatgrass or even a, a short grass prairie component, uh, which can have cool and warm season species. And so it varies a, a lot across the state in, of Nebraska in particular, but uh, depends on the region and then depends on um, the, the, uh, the goals of the operation primarily. Not all agricultural operations are the same. So, it stands to reason that some plants may be more desirable or undesirable to a producer, depending on the function of the plants within their respective operation. Yeah, so, so livestock production producers, um, it, it'll even depend on uh, what type of production and, and what species. And so, uh, if you're, you're running uh, live uh, cattle, which is uh, common around here um, in, in Nebraska, then you'd be looking at more of a, a species that produces, uh, you, want, you want good quality because uh, whether you have a cow-calf operation or a stock or yearling operation um, or both, you're going to want to have some good quality species out there. So good uh, high-end protein or and energy and be able to, to grow those calves or those yearlings and be able to uh, meet the nutrient requirements of the cows that are producing uh, milk for their calves. And so you're, you're wanting a balance between uh, forage quality and quantity. Um, and, and like I said, even depends on what species of livestock, you know, maybe your goals are, uh, or maybe you're running sheep or goats or something like that. And you're looking at um, a totally, um, a, a very different uh, uh, diet when it comes to sheep and goats. Um, but when it comes to the goals of the property, uh, livestock production is uh, a large one in this state, but uh, there's a, there's also a lot of uh, well conservation minded ranchers, and so they're looking at wildlife as well, and uh, they're looking at uh, potential um, hunting uh, enterprises or, or wildlife viewing enterprises, and so that's becoming more and more popular. Ecotourism, and then we also have organizations across the state, whether private or uh, non government organizations. Um, or, or state organizations that manage property for wildlife. And so um, they'd be looking at um, maybe a different, a slightly different uh, uh, goals as far as uh, versus uh, livestock production. While plant identification is a big part of managing your grassland, during the summer months, as the heat continues to climb, there are a few things you may want to consider when it comes to managing your pastures efficiently throughout an impending drought. Um, we're watching that really closely here in Western Nebraska because our our uh, our pastures are cool season dominated, and when it starts to get hot and dry, they start to go dormant and put a seed head on, and quality decreases. And so that's something we're watching closely out here. Um, it's uh, basically comes down to uh, you know, keeping an eye on your forage resource because impacts this year 
uh, during a drought year uh, are, are compounded. So um, if we're in there and we're grazing a little heavier than we should, or we're not watching the pastures and we stay in a pasture a little longer than we should, those, those uh, impacts are going to be compounded. And we're going to feel those effects for potentially not even just next year, but, but several years to come. And so um, I, I would urge folks to watch their forest supply and pasture closely and how those, uh, um, those plants are responding or not responding when it comes to grazing and, and the dryness. And then keep an eye on uh, your animals, of course, uh, their demand to make sure you're still meeting their nutrient requirements um, and, and keep an eye on what plants they're, they're selecting for. And if their diet is starting to, um, you know, if their, their condition is starting to slip and they're starting to select for less desirable, uh, less nutritious species, then it's time uh, potentially to, uh, to move those animals to a different pasture or think about um, um, other grazing uh, uh, mitigation. So looking at destocking or, or feeding or something like that. While identifying every plant in your pasture isn't necessarily something you must be able to do, if you can identify the most desirable plants and nurture them along, while also identifying the most undesirable plants in order to mitigate their presence, you're well on your way to managing your grasslands more profitably. Reporting for Market Journal, I'm Bill Dodd. <laughs>